Hey folks, just got another quick video for you here. Uh, this is just a little something just showing you a couple little carving projects that I worked on recently. Uh, one of them's finished, one of them's not. Really not that big of a deal, just something to pass the time at work when it gets a little bit slow. This one right here, which looks kind of mysterious from this angle, is actually a name, has a name on it that is Chance, that is the name of my coworker. And uh, I hope he doesn't mind me putting his name on there since, you know, obviously the rest of his name is left anonymous. But I'm still working on this one. It's pretty rough. I'm just kind of getting the letters cut in real basic and then I'll go in and smooth it. But someone had mentioned that they'd like to see a whittling video. Now at some point I'd like to actually sit down and make a series of videos where, you know, I'll start with just a blank block of wood and then carve it into something and kind of show you the process. But I haven't really decided which way I'm going to go about it. So for now, you know, if I get a little piece that I've worked on for a little bit and I get a chance to share it with you, even though I'm not actually carving it before your eyes, I thought I'd at least offer that up and kind of show you some stuff I'm working on. So I made one of these for my mother-in-law that had her name on it, and she really liked it, and it came out really nice. I was really happy with it. So I decided to make one for my coworker just for fun. He didn't ask for it, but I was, uh, you know, sitting around with a little bit of extra time at work one day, and I decided, you know, what am I going to... What am I going to start carving? And I thought I'd just make one of these for him. So this is actually what a survey stake looks like in its entirety. If you can just imagine that being all obviously one solid piece of wood. You know, we've got the pointed end that you drive into the ground and then the end of it is usually painted. And uh, so I just started carving in the letters and it's pretty easy. The reason I've got my Victorinox right here is that both of these two pieces were carved almost completely with the Victor Victorinox. Now, that's one, and this one's not done. Let me also show you real quick. Um, you'll see that I chipped out a piece on that C right there, and then on the back, and the back definitely is much more rough than the front. I want to try and make it match from one side to the other, but I'm, I'm going slow. By the way, this I have been working on for... Uh, probably over two months. Now you might laugh and say, wow, that two months and that's all you've got. You have to understand that, you know, I might only get a few seconds here and there to kind of notch away at it. So I'll throw this in my tool belt and just when I get a couple seconds where, you know, my crew chief is occupied doing something else and I can grab a few seconds just to carve away a little bit more, I will. And that's why I didn't just, you know, bang this out overnight. This is a really slow process. And uh, that's what makes it somewhat frustrating sometimes because I want to see it you know looking finished right away or at least looking somewhere near the finished product and a lot of times it just takes weeks and weeks if not longer before I finally get it to where I want it so I, I just wanted to show you that there's also I chipped off a piece on the back right here that's usually commonly when you're carving um, sometimes you get a weak piece of wood or it has some splits in it and that's always bad this was a combination of that and also uh, the biggest culprit for me which is impatience I get aggressive I cut a little bit too hard or you know put a little bit too much pressure and try and cut off a large piece at one time and then some of the wood chips away as a result so these were my own fault and if you're looking to get into carving or whittling uh, my best advice for you is uh, just try it you know don't really you don't really have to have a method in place you'll kind of pick up the basics pretty quick but uh, just get into it. Just start cutting away and see how you like it. Get a feel for the wood. The type, you know, there's different types of woods. They're gonna have different hardness. They're gonna carve easier or harder depending on the type. And I am no, by no means, a wood expert. You know, I just kind of carve what's around. And if you have like a craft store, if you don't have any wood that you can just grab out of your backyard or a little wood pile somewhere nearby, um, you know, your nearest craft store, if you have like a Michaels or something like that, go there and they have little bags of blocks of. Uh, wood that you can carve on that are actually pretty soft. You can also carve soap or any other, you know, acrylic, other synthetic materials. So there's, you know, wax is another good choice. All sorts of good different materials to learn on. And uh, I just wanted to show a couple things that I had worked on. So that's one. And then this other one, now this one was carved entirely with the Victorinox. And in fact, it was carved entirely with the shorter blade. Most of this one is the shorter blade. The, lo the longer blades when you're carving, uh, you tend to find that because you want to put your thumb, you know, you want to get a little bit of pressure against the blade, the longer blades don't really work as well, at least not in my experience. So I just used this shorter one lately for uh, both of these pieces. And this one actually went really fast. This I just kind of lucked out. And this was from a broken, that's why it's so short. This was from a similar stake, but as you can see, it's just a shorter piece. So I sawed off the end to kind of smooth it up and uh, just did this one little link. So this was originally all one piece, obviously. 
and you can kind of see I'll put that knife down before I jab myself uh, you can kind of see you know how narrow I, I kind of was sloppy on this one you can see right here it got really narrow in the middle if it gets too narrow you know when you go to break the the links free uh, you could have it split right there and then that would be really frustrating but this piece right here with just using that uh, Victorinox Tinker I think total didn't take me more than maybe an hour hour and 15 minutes and I did this in just a couple days this one went really fast because the wood was so soft and uh, these links people are always really impressed by these I had another uh, older chain that I've got here um, I, I, I'm really impressed by them too. It's like after I carve it, I sit there and just go, wow, that's really neat. <laughs> because, you know, it's one, it's just one solid piece. There's no break in it anywhere. And, uh, and so that's usually pretty eye-catching. So this one's not quite as impressive as the other one because I just hacked away at it and did it really quick. But still a lot of fun. And I, I highly recommend that, that you all, if you haven't tried any carving, uh, any little projects, any little whittling, Get yourself a small blade and just sit down and try it because it's really therapeutic. It's like sharpening your knives. It just it's a lot of fun and it just kind of takes a lot of uh, stress away. You know, if you're getting frustrated with something else in life, just go ahead and start doing some carving and uh, and it helps a lot. So the one thing I do want to show, like I said, you don't really need any special training or anything fancy. But one thing I will recommend, and if you ever go look up wood carving or whittling on any of the knife forums or just about anywhere, if you go head up, hit up some of these. Uh, uh, whittling forums that are out there online and almost everyone uh, universally will recommend this book and the tripod is moving because my cat's bumping it with her head like usual um, EJ Tangerman Tangerman I don't know how you pronounce that but uh, he is the author of this book this book is actually really old it's been reprinted several times I bought this off of eBay I think it maybe cost three or four dollars shipped and I've had it for some time probably ten years uh, it's a very popular and common book, and like I said, you'll see it recommended all over the place online. But it's really, really beautiful. It's well written, and it's really got uh, some cool pictures in here. It shows you a lot of, uh, you know, fully 3D carvings, some relief carvings, uh, all different sorts of materials. You'll see some of the chains, the uh, ball in a cage, which is another really popular carving. Um, just all sorts of great stuff, and it's really simply written, and it tells you not only you know some of the history of wood carving but also a lot of the technique and it gives you tips on sharpening it gives you tips on what woods to choose what type of knife to use how to approach it uh, different types of cuts that you can employ in your whittling so if you're at all interested in this type of hobby uh, this book you can usually find it pretty cheap you might even have this at your used bookstore locally I don't know if there's the an ebook version or not for those of you with your tablets or phones that you might want to read it on there. It may very well have been scanned in and republished as an ebook. I don't know, but check this one out. Maybe pick up another book or just skip the books completely. You know, I started carving before I ever had anything like this and this was just a nice way of kind of brushing up on some stuff and just learning a little bit more about the art and the craft of whittling and wood carving. Uh, great stuff. So again, that book is Whittling and Wood Carving by E.J. Tangerman. And, uh, there's just a couple of my little latest projects. So do please, if you're at all interested, check that out. Grab a piece of wood and just start hacking away at it and you'll get the basics really soon. And I think you'll find that it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.